This is the new Lizzie Hab Flex Pen. I made a video on it a few days ago, and I pretty much came to the conclusion that for $20, this is an amazing pen. Yes, it's not a vintage Waterman, but you're going to struggle to find a vintage Waterman. Well, if you're buying from someone who knows their stuff, you're going to struggle to buy vintage Waterman for less than $20, unless you're incredibly lucky. This $20 is going to blow every other pen out of the water. Pilot nibs don't stand a chance. This offers real flex. That being said, if I was ever going to do proper calligraphy, I'd use this primitive tool. This is a dip pen. If you don't know what a dip pen is, ink, you dip, you write. Pretty simple, straightforward. Dip pen consists of only this, the dip pen nib and the holder. There's no feed, there's no ink reservoir, there's nothing. Which means, while you do get a lot of flex from this, you get a stupid amount of flex from this, you need to keep dipping, which means that a lot of your time will be spent dipping. Here, the ink will run out after a very long time. That makes this pen look very, very attractive for, I guess, writing cover plate. But if I was ever to write copper plate, I'd certainly use this pen. And this is what this video is about. Why I'd use a dip pen to do copper plate. And yeah. So, first things first, this is a dip pen. This is a speedball um, nib. Um, let's, let's start with the basics first. So let's just open the ink and just get a few lines down. Wait, first I'll just... First of all, I was saying, one thing that you can never get from a fountain pen is this. This is an oblique nib holder. Um, when you're doing proper calligraphy, you're going to be writing using a grid that you'll put under, under the paper. The grid will have lines, I believe it's between 50, is it 50 degrees and 45 degrees. Pretty much, you'll have a grid and it'll be like that and you'll write on an angle. These knit, this will allow you to write using slanted writing. It's a lot more ergonomic. You will never be able to get that with a proper fountain pen. That being said, I can't use this. That's why it doesn't have a nib in it. I can't use it. I've been trained to use a straight pencil my whole life. I've been trained to use a straight pen. And I've always been trained to use a straight fountain pen. So if you really want to do proper fountain pen calligraphy, copper plate calligraphy. This is the way to go, cannot do it. So, let's just see what type of lines we'll get. Also, I'm also gonna use this. We'll come to this in a minute, but this thing is awesome. So, let me just dip it. Here, so, we have the speedball. Speedball dip pen. Oh, there you go. Doesn't take very long until you have to re dip the pen and then you sort of have to retrace your steps. Never mind. We have Rhodia so it won't bleed through. But just in case it bleeds through, I have a, another piece of paper underneath. So fingers crossed it doesn't bleed through. I uh, just had to plug my phone in. So, dip um, pen. So, what we have here is some lovely um, lines being put put down. Um, this is an untipped nib. So, one thing that you, one thing that this really crushes this on is normal writing. It's just regular stainless steel. So if you try and write regularly, it's going to, it did it there, it will dig into the paper. That's one thing you really have to look out for when you're using these types of nibs. It will dig into the paper. This here, let me just open it. Oh, the smell. Um, this has an iridium nib on the well, an iridium ball, which means you can do regular writing. That's something I will point out, and that really will distinguish the nibs. So, let's just get a base reading for an un unflexed 
line. So, the line that it puts down is fine. It's really nice. And you don't get much natural line variation. That being said, you put down a little bit of pressure, and I mean a little bit of pressure, it will start to spread and you'll get some thicker lines. And if you're very careful and you're slow, you will get really thick lines, but then you'll have to re-dip. So, speedball dip pen, that's what you're gonna to expect to get, and it's wonderful. When you try and do some copper plate writing, let me just try, so. You don't have to put down much pressure, and you'll get some lovely lines. It is really nice to work with. Um, let me just do an, uh, and then you have to re-dip. That is one thing that you really need to get used to. It's frustrating, and if you're doing, say, a lot of, say, uh, I don't know, maybe cards or wedding, invita wedding invitations, it's gonna get really annoying, which is why when I was writing um, cards for my friend, it would have been a lot nicer to have this pen because um, the noodles I have, no dipping at all. So we have the noodlers Ahab that's a terrible A Ahab so this is the fine nib come on yeah so something that you get with this pen that you don't really get with the dip pen is hard starts there's always going to be ink in here well, ink in a dip pen's nib that um, hit or miss because you have a feed and a reservoir that it pretty much relies on to get its ink from. This can be hit or miss, especially with Nula's Ahabs. I've been tinkering around with it. I just haven't gotten it perfect. It's better than what it was, but yeah. Um, as I said before, this is a tipped nib, which means you can do regular people writing. I mean, regular writing, yeah. You get the point. Um, that being said, the line that you put down, even though that this is a fine, the line that you put down is going to be thicker. And then if I try and put down pressure, come on, really got to slow down with this pen. And that's as far as I dare to push it. Now, one thing that really will distinguish it is the amount of pressure. I'm putting down quite a lot of pressure to get this line, and judging by it, the line's not as thick. This is a thinner line, if we just... Yeah, this is a thinner line that we'll get here from the Noodler's Ahab. And, in fact, if you have a look, the thinnest line that we'll put down is also thicker. That means that the difference between the thinnest line and the thickest line is going to be a lot smaller as a ratio compared to um, this pen. So if we do some copper plate, in fact, I'll do it right under it. So it's not going to look as nice. Yes, it's something, but it's not going to be that amazing. Plus, I needed to put down a substantial amount of pressure just to get those lines. Um, it was a lot easier to do these lines. That being said, I can write now. Here, I would have had to dip immediately. So that's some of the pros and cons. Uh, let me just do a little bit more uh, copper plate. So, with the noodlers. Let's do a B, and let's switch over, dip it, and let's try a B with this pen. Let me fix that up. Untipped, so it is going to, it is going to dig into the paper.
And honestly, just by looking at it, I think this is much nicer. The thinnest line here and here is a lot thinner than here. And it really makes the parts that are thicker stand out a lot more. And that's something I think that copper plates um, really shines on doing. Um, the fact that it stands out just pops is due to the fact that you have some really thin lines and then it's contrasted by really thick lines. And that's really the determining factor between me deciding to use a dip pen rather than a noodler's. Because yes, it is nice, but it just doesn't have the same level of pop that um, the dip pens have. Now, let's bring in this other fountain pen nib. This is gonna produce a much thinner line than either of these but the thickest line that it can produce is going to be much thinner. So let me just show you. I don't know what to call it. This is another speedball nib. I'll just write it here. So this is the speedball. You can even see here that it's producing stupidly thin lines and then thick lines. Small, oh, let's just do EF. EF. So, let's just get writing sample. So, these are the lines that it will produce. Extra fine, stupidly fine. Then, with a small amount of pressure, I really want to emphasize small. And that's what you're going to get. You're going to go from that to that. Compared to, let's go to the noodlers. That to a line that is almost the same width as a noodler's. It's not going to be as wide as the other speedball nib, but um, the contrast between the small line and the thick line is really going to give the resulting copper plate um, a flare. So, right underneath, let's just write... absolutely amazing and it looks great um, and while that um, this is not going to be as thick as this the contrast absolutely makes it pop so let's just do a B and I think that is really just the art of you know well I guess copper plates and one other thing that I'll bring into this just because I can is this Pilot Penmanship. This is a Japanese extra fine nib. I've already done a review about it. But something that I said when I was reviewing this pen was, yes, it doesn't flex that much, but it produces a flex in such a way that it makes it really stand out because you're going from an extra fine to maybe a Japanese... between a Japanese fine and a Japanese medium, and it really allows it to stand out. And that's what I really want to get onto also the difference between well the contrasting that you can get and it's really the contrast that this noodler's ahab does not really give you yes it um does flex but when you're doing copper plate it just doesn't give you a contrast that allows it to pop so let's just do the pilot pen pen Oh, there you go. So, extra fine lines, similar in size to that, but once you start adding pressure, you get a thicker line. Yes, it is still thin. It's not a, it's not gigantic, but thin line, thick line. You're gonna get some nice contrast. So when you try and do some copper plate. going to stand out and it's going to pop and especially if you have small writing it's going to look nice I must say so oh and the cool thing is you can use this for everyday writing
yeah. So that's pretty much what I would, that's what I want to get up, get up and talk about. Um, Noodles Ahab, good pen. You can write it, write with it every day. You can get some nice writing. You can play with the flex. You can get some sort of flexy writing, nice writing. But for copper plate, leave it to the dip pens. Dip pens, awesome contrast. It really is awesome. Pilot penmanship, I brought it in because I because I thought it really proves the point. Fine, extra fine, fine, produces a lovely contrast. And while it's not the thickest line in the world, it looks really nice and it pops. So, that is a rambling, I guess. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. This is really experimental. Um, I just want to ramble for a little bit, um, talk about this awesome pen. I may have put it on blast today, but I still like it. It's really nice. Um, that being said, copper plate, that's reserved for the dip pens. Oh, and obliques. That's dip pen only.